Over a thousand years ago, in the heart of the Islamic Golden Age, a brilliant mind emerged whose influence would transcend borders, languages, and centuries. His name was Ibn Sina, known in the West as Avicenna. A physician, philosopher, and thinker, his works shaped the foundations of modern science and medicine. In this documentary, we'll explore the extraordinary life, the challenges, and the enduring legacy of one of history's greatest intellectuals, Ibn Sina. Ibn Sina was born in the year 980, near the city of Bukhara, in present-day Uzbekistan. His father served as a civil servant in the Samanid court, one of the great Persian dynasties of the Islamic Golden Age. Surrounded by culture and scholarship, the young Ibn Sina grew up in an environment where knowledge was highly valued. From an early age his intellectual abilities astonished his teachers. He studied under renowned scholars, including the philosopher Natalie and the Hanafi jurist Ismail al-Zahid. His father also ensured that he received training in the Quran, Islamic law, and the Arabic language. But Ibn Sina's curiosity reached far beyond theology. He immersed himself in logic, mathematics, astronomy, natural sciences, and philosophy. By his teenage years he was already studying medicine under the guidance of a physician named Kushyar. His rapid mastery of medical knowledge made him a practicing doctor before the age of 18. At just 17 he famously cured the ruler of Bukhara, earning access to the royal library. This immense collection of Greek, Persian, Indian, and Islamic works became a turning point in his intellectual journey, giving him the foundation to build his own groundbreaking ideas. The world Ibn Sina lived in was one of remarkable cultural exchange. During the Islamic Golden Age, scholars across the empire translated and studied works from Greek philosophers, Indian mathematicians, and Persian scientists. Knowledge was not only preserved but expanded and Ibn Sina was at the heart of this intellectual revolution. Over his lifetime he wrote nearly 450 works, around 240 of which have survived to this day. Of these, 150 focused on philosophy and 40 on medicine. His ability to bridge science, philosophy, and theology made him a true polymath of his time. In medicine, his most celebrated achievement was Al-Kanun Fil-Tib, the canon of medicine. This monumental text systematically organized medical knowledge from Greek, Roman, Persian, and Islamic traditions, while also introducing Ibn Sina's own clinical observations. For over seven centuries it remained a cornerstone of medical education, taught in universities across Europe well into the 17th century. The canon described infectious diseases, emphasized the importance of testing new treatments, and even explored the psychological dimensions of health. It was a medical encyclopedia far ahead of its time. In the West, Ibn Sina became known as the Prince of Physicians, and often simply as the Master. But his intellect went far beyond medicine. His other monumental work, Kitab al-Shifa, the Book of Healing, was not about physical healing, but the healing of the soul through knowledge. It was an encyclopedic work on philosophy and the sciences, covering logic, metaphysics, mathematics, and natural science. Through this, Ibn Sina sought to unify reason and faith, science and philosophy. He lived during a period when Greek and Roman philosophical texts, especially the works of Aristotle and Plato, were being studied throughout the Islamic world. Yet he did not simply imitate these ideas, he reinterpreted them, challenged them, and developed original insights. His famous floating man thought experiment, for example, explored human self-awareness and consciousness in ways that anticipated modern philosophy. Beyond medicine, Ibn Sina became one of the greatest philosophers of the Islamic world. He wrote extensively on logic, ethics, and especially metaphysics, the study of existence itself. His writings built on Aristotle and Al-Farabi, but he developed ideas uniquely his own. One of his most important contributions was the distinction between essence and existence. In simple terms, essence is what something is, while existence is the fact that it actually is. For example, the idea of a tree, its essence, is different from the existence of a real tree growing in a forest. This distinction helped him explore one of philosophy's oldest questions, why does anything exist at all? He argued that most things in the universe are possible beings, they may exist, or they may not. Their existence depends on something else. But there must be one being that is not possible, but necessary, a being that exists on its own, without relying on anything else. This he called the necessary existent, the first cause and ultimately, God. 
This idea became central to Islamic philosophy and would later influence Christian philosophers in Europe including Thomas Aquinas. Yet his bold ideas were not without critics. The theologian Al-Ghazali accused him of relying too heavily on Greek thought and straying from Islamic teachings. These debates shaped the intellectual landscape of the Islamic world for centuries. While Ibn Sina is remembered most for his medical works, his influence extended far beyond medicine. He was a true polymath, a scientist who explored physics, chemistry, astronomy, psychology, and even geology. In physics, he challenged Aristotle's theory that motion always required a continuous push. Instead, he introduced the concept of impetus, the idea that an object set in motion carries within it a tendency to keep moving. Centuries later, this would help lay the groundwork for Newton's laws of motion. In chemistry, he rejected alchemy's mystical claims that base metals could be turned into gold. Instead, he insisted on observation and experimentation, emphasizing that transformations of matter must follow natural laws. In psychology, he described the inner senses, memory, and imagination in ways that foreshadowed modern cognitive science. He recognized that emotions and mental states could affect physical health, a remarkably modern insight for the 11th century. Astronomy was another field of interest. He observed the stars, studied the movement of planets, and even suggested that Venus might be closer to Earth than previously believed. His writings show an effort to reconcile the mathematics of the heavens with physical reality. What unites all these contributions is Ibn Sina's method, reason, observation, and systematic inquiry. He believed that truth could be discovered not only through inherited knowledge, but through the active use of the human mind. From the hospitals of Persia to the universities of Europe, Ibn Sina's ideas traveled across centuries and continents. He was more than a physician or philosopher. He was a bridge between worlds of knowledge. His writings shaped medicine, influenced philosophy, and inspired generations of thinkers who came after him. Even today, a thousand years later, his works remind us of the power of curiosity, reason, and the human spirit to seek truth. Ibn Sina's story is not just about the past. It is about the timeless quest for knowledge that continues to shape our future. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this journey into history, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more documentaries on the great minds who changed our world.